When it comes to the Cleric, as we previously mentioned, there have been some changes. We have Divine Order now, as well as some changes to Divine Intervention. Lots of divine things have been changed. <laughs> That's right. So the Cleric uh, was received very well in our previous playtest. And so really here we're focused on this class on doing fine tuning. And so there are a variety of things that have been fine tuned not only in the class, but also in the subclasses. But I think two of the main things that we've done are with those divine features you mentioned. So divine order, a feature that in our previous cleric playtest was called holy order, has moved from second level to first level. It was a really popular feature, and really the main thing that people wanted was to get it even sooner than second level. We've also, in the process of moving it to first level, uh, we have essentially merged the previous Thaumaturge and Scholar options into a single option called Thaumaturge. So now in Divine Order you decide whether to have the Protector uh, option or the Thaumaturge option. This allows you right out of the gate with your Cleric to decide, am I going to be clad in heavy armor or am I going to go in the Thaumaturge route have an additional cantrip, and have a bonus to any of my intelligence religion checks equal to my wisdom modifier. So this is, in essence, a, a, a choice that was previously, in 2014, built into individual subclasses. Well, where it wasn't actually a choice, because in the 2014 version of these subclasses, uh, you would have either heavy armor proficiency uh, or an additional cantrip or the like given to you by your subclass. Now you get to choose which of those things you get mm. in this divine order feature. And so this is an example of us taking something that previously you had no control over and we're now letting you decide. Similar thing we do at... Uh, higher level in the class where we take uh, the potent spell casting and divine strikes features that were previously built into subclasses and they are now built into the core class. Now divine intervention. The main playtest feedback we've gotten for a long time on divine intervention is for it to function in a way that is more reliable for the cleric. Right. Anyone who has used the 2014 version of the feature knows there is not only a uh, element of randomness in whether the cleric's deity is even listening, yeah. but even if you're successful on your, your role, there's sort of a mother may I interaction with the DM yeah. on the form in which that intervention takes. People have really wanted the cleric to be able to do something more reliable. So with that in mind, we have redesigned both divine intervention and greater divine intervention to give the cleric greater certainty. So divine intervention, what it allows the cleric to do is choose any divine spell, a fifth level or lower, and cast it. It can be a spell they do not have prepared. Uh, they do not have to provide material components for it. Uh, this means, for instance, a cleric, oh, and they cast it uh, as an action. So this divine intervention could be, for instance, a cleric casting raised dead, yep. not needing yep. <laughs> not needing a material component, and doing it in an action. So that is powerful divine intervention that we can give with no random roll uh, and no sort of DM negotiation. You've ruined the diamond market in the game. <laughs> <laughs> All these NPCs that have been selling diamonds, you've just destroyed their economy. Uh, but again, you have to be a high-level cleric to be able to do this. Greater divine intervention then turns up the volume on that of allowing the cleric to essentially do what the wish spell does using mm. the careful parameters set up in that spell. And we decided to use that spell as the framework for greater divine intervention precisely because it already has built in a, a framework that D&D fans understand on like what's reasonable for right. this 
this, you know, magical swinging for the fences to actually accomplish. Uh, and so I think it's going to be a lot of fun for clerics to now know the form that their divine intervention is going to take. And that makes a lot of sense, too. If you get wildly strange in your wish, you know, you know, even when it was just like for wizards, um, that can backfire on you. And now it kind of has like a different flavor if it, you are asking this of your deity mm -hmm. and you've gone a little far afield, maybe a little arrogant in your request. <laughs> there might be some negative repercussions yeah. as well. Yep. Yeah, different yep. theme. That's perfect. Anything else? Uh, again, a lot of really nice details uh, in the cleric subclasses. Yeah. Uh, I am excited for people to try out uh, the new version of the trickery domain. Yes. Uh, we have made it so that uh, the duplicate that you create is far easier to use. Uh, you're now able to create it as a bonus action rather than as an action. Perfect. And I think the whole subclass works together more tightly. And where... That makes it better for combat. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you can pop that as a bonus action, then and make your attack and get that advantage. And uh, we've also done things like in uh, the light domain, we combined two of the features so that you get a higher level function for your warding flare earlier, right. which then allowed us to create a brand new feature in the space opened up. So I encourage everyone to dig in because you're going to find new features, uh, improved features, all over the place. And again, the design notes kind of walk you through. What, this is why I really love, because rather than taking my 2014 rule book and comparing it to this, uh, I, you, you kind of outline, like, okay, this is what changed, this got merged, That's it's nice. It's like I, having director's commentary on the play test. Exactly, so. yeah. Yeah, everyone, please don't don't go looking for the needle in the haystack. We, <laughs> we, we let you know in those design notes uh, yeah. which features are new and which features have changed. Um, so we've got life domain, we've got light domain, and we've got the trickery domain, my favorite cleric. Yes. <laughs> we also have the war domain. We do have the war domain in this. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah so. we have four. Every class has, has four subclasses. Uh, but in a few cases, the fourth subclass, uh, we just point you to Tasha's Cauldron of Everything where you can find the subclass to use with the playtest. 